Супер. Тоді давайте не завалікати час. Ще раз добрий день. Once again, hello and welcome at the third coordination meeting for assistance to victims of explosive ordnance in Ukraine. So this is our third meeting of such type and Congratulations, everyone who is able to take part. Uh, right now, we have with us uh, representatives of different UN agencies, different uh, government institutions, and we are also waiting for other participants to join us. We are uh, glad to welcome international and uh, national uh, non-government organizations working in this sector in Ukraine. A few words about our today's uh, event and what we are planning to do here. So, you have all uh, received agendas uh, and uh, we will have a couple of speakers and according to our then uh, we hope to hear uh, their presentations. Hopefully uh, this will be both interesting and uh, useful. And uh, those who are here in this room, uh, those who are joining us online, I encourage you to please be active. So uh, in case you have any uh, questions, please raise your uh, hand if you are online or, or you can also ask your question in the chat and uh, we will read your question and answer it and if you are here on site and you have a question or a comment please raise your hand and speak up it's very important to us and we truly hope uh, this event is going to be very interesting but for uh, this all of us need to be active and uh, actively engage in this discussion. So our first part uh, is going to be a, a few uh, words uh, uh, summarizing the results uh, since our uh, previous uh, coordination meeting. And uh, then we will have our PUDA partners presenting their projects and uh, lessons learned about uh, the uh, implementation of certain uh, projects and also we will have one more presentation there presentation on uh, victims assistance uh, uh, based on the uh, dashboard this will be uh, presented by the secretariat of uh, the uh, uh, national uh, the mining body and uh, then we will split into two sessions or two, two separate discussions so in this room we're gonna have uh, the uh, mass media campaign discussion and one more uh, section service directory is going to happen in this neighboring uh, uh, room i mean room on the same floor it is uh, on the uh, left side from the main entrance and we will be glad to uh, help you find uh, the uh, room of your choice if it's not this one so uh, we are going to work uh, for two hours uh, in uh, those uh, discussion groups and hopefully both the online and offline participants uh, will have a good chance to have a discussion there after which we are expecting to have a uh, short uh, coffee break for half an hour and then we will have a brief um, final uh, session to discuss uh, the uh, uh, main areas uh, in which we're gonna move forward so if uh, you have any questions i'm ready to answer them so we are also um, ready to answer questions from the online participants and since uh, the questions are not there yet 
let us recall once again why we are having these meetings, why we started doing this. And yeah, this is uh, the terms of reference. You uh, can see here in the uh, first uh, part, you can see uh, that uh, uh, DRC and uh, uh, Humanity and Inclusion have taken on this uh, role of coordinating these meetings. We have decided uh, uh, how uh, we're going to proceed. We have developed some structure and we developed some areas of activity. So if we consider these areas. Some of them have been addressed uh, already um, in our previous meetings. Uh, so, uh, for instance, ensuring a platform for coordinating activities, we contributed to data collection and disaggregation uh, concerning the uh, mine victims and also we were working in different uh, activity areas so for uh, this uh, today's discussion uh, we will focus on two important subjects which um, i would like to be in focus of our attention and our uh, actions one area is the advocacy campaign and our capacity for doing this advocacy with support of mass media and the understanding and the protection of rights of persons affected by mines. Uh, some of them got uh, disabilities because of this. And uh, one more area is uh, the service directory of services uh, that are currently available in Ukraine. I do understand uh, that it may sound uh, quite vague for now, but we will try to focus and develop some important steps that need to be made there. So, a couple of words about uh, the uh, results uh, since our previous uh, meeting. So, last time we had uh, three sections and uh, the results are, well, uh, for some information summary about uh, the uh, financial assistance available to uh, mine uh, victims. And so uh, this is uh, the support provided by the uh, government institutions. Uh, we received the information from the Ministry of Social Policy. By the way, you all have this information available in your handouts. And uh, also uh, the online participants uh, and uh, offline as well will uh, receive uh, a letter with the information package once uh, this event is over. So uh, there will be uh, some useful information is use it and we have also put together the information discussed at the uh, second uh, round table so it's about uh, the uh, international and uh, uh, local ngos uh, the criteria, uh, the, the the amounts and how uh, the uh, personal information is protected so we have been working on this to provide uh, the information uh, here and also there was one more interesting session on inclusion so we have provided here information uh, on uh, how to communicate with people with disabilities and one more section we had it's the incidents uh, database and uh, uh, 
a database also of uh, uh, mine victims. So this project was uh, uh, then uh, led by uh, the uh, Ministry of Reintegration of Temporarily Occupied uh, Territories. Right now, it is uh, managed by uh, the uh, National Mine Action Authority. So. Uh, uh, this website is uh, available and also uh, here there is some practical information as well and hopefully you will find it uh, useful. So now if we have any questions at this point, I suggest that you ask your questions uh, or uh, maybe you have some comments offline, online. Yeah. So, by the way, uh, those uh, who are with us uh, online, can you confirm that you are uh, able to hear us? Okay. So uh, then, let me invite here our uh, UD partners. It is uh, Petro with a presentation of their work. Thank you. Let me express uh, gratitude to the uh, uh, colleagues in DRC for this opportunity to uh, speak here. So, uh, yeah, we are getting some arid alerts. Can I still present? So today, I would like to make the presentation of uh, uh, the Office of the Association of the Miners of Ukraine and to present uh, our experience in uh, supporting victims. We have implemented two pilots uh, this year, one in cooperation with uh, uh, IRC, and as uh, you can see uh, here in this slide, there are regions we worked in. We have completed uh, the uh, first uh, part of it. 300 people were covered. It was uh, the uh, moneygram. Um, uh, from abroad, uh, paid to uh, these victims, uh, 500 euro per person. Right now, we are impl uh, implementing the uh, second project in cooperation with UHF. And here you can see uh, the uh, regions mentioned in this slide. We are planning to support 100 uh, people and uh, in this case, we are making direct money transfers from uh, the Association of the Miners of Ukraine, and the amount of it is 500 US dollars. So, uh, some more information about uh, the numbers in this um, project. In cooperation with RC, we have completed a large part of the pilot. We have uh, supported 351 person, and we have also uh, supported um, uh, uh, we, we have supported 51 person within UHF initiative. And so in terms of geography, we have the best coverage in Kharkiv region. We have received uh, about 140 applications and we supported uh, 140 people, 60% of uh, people um, receiving our aid were men, the rest were women. In terms of uh, age, adults were our key uh, beneficiaries, and also there were some children and elderly people. And uh, as you can also see, 198 people were as uh, urban population and 102 were IDPs. 
A few words about uh, the uh, stages of implementation of uh, this project. In the beginning of the year, we have created a registration form on uh, our website. And here is a link uh, that you can see here and anyone can uh, check it out. And uh, the next uh, step for the beneficiary is to fill out uh, the form, and uh, it is quite a simple thing to do. After that, the uh, beneficiary submits uh, the form, and uh, we uh, receive uh, the uh, application in the form of a small PDF file and our humanitarian coordinators are processing it and we are uh, contacting the beneficiary to inform them that uh, the application is under uh, the process. And um, despite the fact that uh, the main information has been provided at this stage, we still need to interview uh, the a beneficiary. After that, we uh, enter the data into our database and proceed with the next steps. So the development of uh, application form, it was a new experience for us. We did not have experience of people identification before. So this, as you can see, uh, quite a simple form. You can register yourself if you are uh, the potential beneficiary or you can register someone else. And this uh, is an opportunity to um, ask a neighbor a relative, a friend, to fill out the application for the person who cannot do this on their own. Another option is to call us uh, and we will fill out the application for them if the person is not able to do this. So we are basically asking some basic uh, personal information and also uh, information about uh, place uh, and time of the injury. So we want to make sure that uh, the region of the beneficiary corresponds to uh, the regions of uh, our uh, project. Also, there is a possibility to provide more information about the incident, but it's uh, not uh, required. Also, there is a section about some basic needs of the person. If we are not able to provide for all of those needs, we are then able to uh, forward the person to another NGO. And so uh, this is uh, the uh, application we uh, uh, receive. And as I mentioned, we receive it uh, as a PDF with also informed consent of the beneficiary. And every humanitarian coordinator has uh, access to this form. And after that, uh, reading the information from this form, uh, we uh, make sure that the uh, beneficiary fits with uh, the project criteria because quite often people lack uh, the full understanding uh, of uh, the uh, criteria for the beneficiaries and uh, the uh, fill out uh, uh, the form without being fully eligible. But here, uh, so we can read in the form, yeah, the criteria is, is met. And uh, then we interview the beneficiary. It's a critical stage. We need to establish direct communication and uh, the coordinator asks uh, the uh, questions from our form. Well, the majority of this information has uh, been uh, provided uh, by the beneficiary before, but it's important to hear it from them uh, directly. And using this opportunity, we are uh, asking the beneficiary for the uh, potential other forms of uh, aid they might need, such as uh, legal or medical aid. And then we uh, also find out about the needs in uh, 
uh, financial aid. Next, we ask uh, the uh, beneficiary for the, uh, the scan copies of their documents, and this basically includes uh, their uh, passport, uh, tax identification code, the uh, medical uh, certificates uh, on the type of uh, injury, and uh, yeah, if, uh, also the, the have their bank account details ready, we are asking for this information as well. So we are establishing a separate folder for each beneficiary to have access uh, to it at any point in time. So the mm, documents of uh, the person are stored in this folder and only two persons in the uh, organization have access to it, the humanitarian coordinator and uh, the uh, project lead. So based on this data, we uh, are making uh, tables and uh, reports to track uh, the beneficiaries and uh, their statistics. In terms of uh, the project uh, implemented with IRC, we also had uh, additional activities since we are uh, sending uh, some data outside of our organization. We are using protected boxes so we can ensure data security in the organization, but when uh, we are sending the data elsewhere, we are using uh, those uh, safe boxes and mm, mm, this is how uh, when only one person from our organization has access to this box we are transferring the data to uh, the partners and one more important uh, a step is a monitoring of uh, the um, uh, funds uh, distribution we want to find out through this violence how uh, the uh, types and methods of uh, the aid provided were convenient to our beneficiaries. So we uh, were able to get feedback from over 63% uh, of beneficiaries, and we found out that 100% respondents were satisfied with the assistance uh, provided, uh, but uh, only 31% uh, of uh, beneficiaries or oh, had uh, their needs um, met fully. Uh, the uh, rest of the uh, beneficiaries who are only able to do this partially. And also, uh, the monitoring has uh, showed us uh, that uh, the uh, uh, main spending areas for the beneficiaries are medicines, uh, examination by doctors, uh, prosthetics, gro groceries, and uh, uh, surgery. So also in some cases, uh, the uh, uh, beneficiaries uh, used uh, the uh, uh, age to also fix uh, uh, other needs that they have, such as uh, damaged housing. So some of the lessons learned from the implementation of these two pilots in the year basic stage of uh, the project development, we asked ourselves how we were going to confirm uh, the uh, mine uh, or explosive trauma. Uh, the on the legal document confirming uh, such a thing is uh, the certificate from the hospital in which we'll read that uh, the uh, person has uh, got uh, uh, mine and trauma, but uh, actually, um, actually, uh, we uh, are having similar certificates uh, issued to people with uh, other uh, trauma. But uh, of course, uh, according to uh, the equality policy, we uh, cannot, uh, for instance, uh, separate uh, the people impacted by uh, mines from people people impacted by um, uh, bombs, uh, for instance, uh, that uh, uh, um, bombs that were dropped from the aircrafts. So yes, so we are 
uh, we are then providing this aid for everyone. And uh, here are some pros of these uh, programs. Uh, well, uh, this includes direct access to the victim without uh, any additional links between us and them. We can monitor um, the applications because we uh, receive them uh, by email. And still, as I have mentioned before filling out of this form is uh, not mm, uh, convenient for everyone for some population groups it's uh, less uh, convenient but our solution was to engage uh, friends, uh, relatives, neighbors, and also uh, staff members of our organization to uh, support them in filling out uh, the application. As I have mentioned, only 31% of uh, the uh, beneficiaries are able to uh, have their needs fully met with this support. And this is yet another proof uh, that no matter how high uh, uh, is the support we provide, some beneficiaries we uh, will have needs uh, that are exceeding that. And we are arriving uh, at the same conclusion we, conclusion we had before. For. If uh, a person is uh, impacted by a mine accident, we need to do case management services to uh, bring person back to normal life because the needs uh, may be entirely different in different persons. So we uh, also had some technical challenges uh, that we are uh, openly mentioned, and sometimes uh, the uh, phone number provided in the form was incorrect, so it was very difficult to reach uh, the beneficiary. Also, since all the data is entered manually, uh, there can be uh, different mechanical mistakes because of the human factor. So there is no ready-made software for such projects. So this is one of the possible development factors. And because of this, uh, some percentage of the beneficiaries were unable to uh, get uh, their aid because they have entered an incorrect phone number and as they have not provided any email. So yeah, sometimes it happens. A person truly needs help, but uh, are not able to do this for uh, technical reasons. Thank you so much for this uh, opportunity to present our experience. And uh, hopefully this will be useful to uh, some of you. You can ask us uh, any questions both here and uh, later. Uh, you, know, you can find us uh, using these uh, contact details. Thank you. Thank you, Petro. And uh, just just a minute here, I will share with you that uh, this uh, building uh, is uh, protected because uh, we have uh, safe walls here we are uh, protected by uh, the two walls and uh, if you still feel unsafe there is a shelter available here but we will continue our work so yeah hello i'm uh, oksana chikmenova uh, drc i have a question about uh, the uh, uh, situations when the beneficiaries uh, lacked medical documents and was this a problem for you? Now, we did not have um, such cases because the majority of people after uh, uh, being uh, in uh, in my uh, accidents, so they uh, contacted uh, ambulance, and uh, but they have listed uh, mine explosion as a mechanism of injury, and we did not need any document from the uh, family doctor, just uh, the brief uh, certificate from the ambulance doctors. That was enough for us. 
I wanted to add that um, our uh, larger global uh, project with uh, RC. By the way, I am the CEO of uh, the Association of uh, the Miners of Ukraine. Um, I learned that uh, the project will uh, continue uh, till uh, the end of 2024. So in total, we are expecting to cover uh, 1,200 people. And as uh, Petro has uh, mentioned here, uh, we are not only providing the uh, financial aid, we stay in touch with the person we want to make sure uh, this work is sustainable and also in the current project we are going to uh, help another couple of hundred people and so we will continue with this uh, mine victim assistance other questions And how are you uh, going to have a phone conversation if the person is deaf? Well, uh, we have developed a, uh, Microsoft Word uh, application, which we also made, uh, made available to uh, the Mine Action Authority. So if the person uh, contacts us uh, in writing, uh, explaining that they cannot be uh, interviewed, well, it's mentioned on the side from the outset that the interview if uh, is necessary and if uh, the person understands uh, since the very beginning that uh, they are not able to be interviewed, uh, they can uh, also inform us uh, by post or uh, also um, uh, telling someone to, to call us and uh, explain this on our hotline. Of course, we have individualized approach. People are indeed uh, different and we indeed uh, intended to have uh, feedback exchange with every beneficiary and also making sure if the beneficiary actually receives the funds if uh, they were able to meet their needs etc hello i'm uh, tatiana uh, uh, well, and i would like to um, also share some positive experience about uh, cooperation with uh, UDA within this uh, uh, project because we are one of the partner organizations. Uh, when um, some mine victims were discovered in our work in the Mikolaev region, we were providing the link to this form and uh, there was uh, usually quite positive feedback. So the only challenge was uh, that some people did not have smartphones to fill this out, but our uh, employees would then support uh, them in this, or also the person was uh, able to use the support of uh, their neighbors, friends, or family. So yeah, such challenges did exist, but uh, they were easily addressable. And uh, whenever people uh, heard about some uh, probability of uh, uh, receiving some aid, we could immediately see uh, the uh, uh, positive emotions and uh, I know that 12 uh, beneficiaries you got uh, were uh, the result of uh, our work because we identified them and I'm pleased to hear that you will uh, continue this uh, project because even in these small steps, it is great that we can uh, support uh, uh, the uh, victims and unfortunately the numbers are still growing. I'm uh, Anton Shevchenko, I'm from IDF. Thank you so much for your presentation. I have a question about uh, the uh, uh, previous uh, comments. So can you tell us more about the process of uh, identification of potential beneficiaries? How did you inform people about uh, this opportunity? Was there any information campaign and uh, where uh, did uh, you get information about the uh, 
uh, cases discovered. Yeah, so uh, first, the uh, uh, form is uh, readily uh, available, so whoever encounters it on the internet can get registered. But of course, that's uh, not uh, the end of it. And we are quite active on uh, Facebook. Uh, we inform uh, people there, and so we also had some uh, previous uh, projects uh, in uh, providing financial aid. Some people are still our subscribers since uh, at that time, so they got this information as well. Also, uh, we have uh, large-scale your activity in Ukraine with IRC. Uh, for instance, we, we are covering over 9,000 people. So we are also working closely with the local governments. And uh, these are the ways we inform citizens about availability of such aid. And also we have quite a big network of uh, uh, partners, so volunteer organizations, which we disseminate this information. So uh, this uh, information is being disseminated uh, in uh, all the ways available to us. Yes, and I will briefly add that uh, uh, with DRC, we also had a discussion on this with Nick Wolk and with uh, Sergei as well. And as uh, far as I remember, the DRC is quite uh, uh, supportive in forwarding uh, uh, their uh, beneficiaries to us uh, and also Norwegian People Aid. So uh, this is yet another organization supporting us. So we are um, collaborating in such a way. And also very importantly, when uh, my action uh, subcluster or my action your uh, uh, was uh, discussing similar issues. We were also sharing this information with members, encouraging them to disseminate it later. And as we will also hear from Alexander Hrabchik, uh, it's been two or three months since we have also started uh, cooperating with the National Mine Action Authority since uh, the started uh, managing uh, these uh, uh, types of activities. And uh, in this regard, we are also having quite uh, effective cooperation. Yeah, I would like to add on my part uh, that, uh, as uh, Timur has uh, mentioned, yes, a partnership uh, uh, does uh, exist. And we received information about the implementation of this uh, project. And yeah, indeed, our organization is uh, engaged in uh, mine action. We uh, are especially uh, dealing with uh, non-technical surveys uh, and uh, uh, awareness raising. So uh, the uh, main um, uh, thing we can do as a part of this work, we can identify the victims and we uh, can communicate with them. So it's a very good opportunity for us to learn where the incident uh, has happened and uh, we can make sure that the person uh, receives uh, this uh, aid uh, using the uh, UDA program. So, uh, in in the course of uh, non-technical surveys and or activities, we uh, were identifying such potential beneficiaries, and uh, then uh, they proceeded uh, with uh, providing aid to those people. So this is very important because uh, every operator has these components of uh, my action and. Uh, uh, this is very important for us to be able to show people that we are not only collecting information, we are also working to support them. I'm Yuri Vasilchenko, National Assembly of uh, People with Disabilities. So my question, uh, do you have uh, any 
yeah, broader uh, communication um, activities. So we have, for, for instance, people with uh, uh, eyesight and uh, hearing challenges, etc. And sometimes we have uh, uh, the different challenges represented in the same person. So. Uh, do you have in your digital forms any way for the person to flag uh, the things? And uh, also the second question is about the uh, uh, taxes. So do, does a person have to pay tax if they receive aid from you? Yeah, speaking of your first uh, question, yes, there was a chance even for a person who is unconscious to get this aid. So in this case, we are communicating to their nearest relative. So this is uh, the way we uh, communicate with the person and this is the way we are learning about uh, the needs of the person. Of course, it's uh, a very uh, individualized approach and uh, it would be quite different, uh, difficult to universalize this. So I, uh, for instance, had the experience of personally uh, speaking uh, with uh, three persons uh, having uh, speech challenges. So it just took a bit longer to have this communication completed, but uh, we did it successfully. Also, if the person is unable to fill out the form, they are supported by their neighbors, uh, friends, or uh, families. As for the disability, we did not uh, collect such data in our project. This was uh, not some uh, required information. We did not uh, discriminate people based on this. So we were uh, providing uh, such uh, support to every person who uh, had some medical uh, certificate about the trauma. So yeah, we made some conclusions. So we realized that we need to collect some additional data about the person's needs. So we can uh, later add the questions about the needs associated with uh, the uh, um, medical uh, condition of the person, but we uh, do not want to make this uh, mandatory field. We want to um, uh, somehow simplify the process for the person, for them to receive their aid as fast as possible. In terms of taxes, let us hear from Timur. Yes, Petro. Uh, is uh, correct in, uh, in his response. And also, uh, we are also considering uh, different ways to um, uh, become more uh, accessible. And uh, as you can see even here, uh, we have uh, sign language uh, represented. So yeah, we are working on this. In terms of the aid received by uh, people, everyone received uh, exactly 500 euros. And uh, as far as I uh, remember, they even had a chance to receive it uh, in euros, not in criminals. Uh, so that was uh, uh, the uh, RC project. And uh, as for uh, the uh, uh, project we are uh, uh, doing with uh, UHF, well, we are in this case uh, paying taxes. So uh, we as the association are paying for uh, paying taxes for the person. And so this impacts the uh, total amount uh, the person may get. So in the uh, subsequent uh, projects with UHF OCHA, we are making sure that the amount is increased so that the person can get uh, the uh, $500 in full. And we also have one question on Zoom. Hello, I am Olga Yudina, it says children's villages, and I have two questions. First, if the person has uh, uh, been uh, injured in the occupied uh, territories and so they have a certificate from there, would they be eligible? And 
My second question is, uh, why exactly $500? Question one. Unfortunately, our program is not uh, available in the occupied territories of Ukraine, just as uh, other uh, similar programs. We had a case when the person had been injured uh, on the occupied territories, but then they got a certificate on the government-controlled territories, and they were able to get their aid. As for the needs assessment, yes, we completed it. And when we monitor in the market and analyze the needs, we realize that $500 is enough to cover some of the basic needs of the victim, such as the prosthetics, maybe a wheelchair if necessary, and also some basic treatment course. So uh, this is, of course, not enough for everyone, but for uh, the uh, basic uh, medical needs, uh, this is uh, potentially enough. Yeah, and also if uh, we uh, can be uh, completely honest with uh, each other, of course, we would very much like to have a bigger amount, but back then, at least that was uh, the uh, maximum available uh, from the donor and uh, uh, also of course this depends on the number of people we want to target because uh, we have to understand that if uh, we were providing one thousand dollars the uh, indicators uh, would be uh, uh, 50 percent lower so this is why we um, I wanted to other questions? Hello, and uh, thank you so much for this presentation. I'm Adina Good, DRC. So, my question uh, What is the most reliable uh, partner from the government authorities? Well, as Timur has mentioned, we are working with the Mine Action Authority, previously with uh, the uh, Ministry of Reintegration of Temporarily Occupied uh, Territories, represented by Mr. Yabtsev, and uh, also as a CC. About the needs of all the population, and we are also assigning MOUs in the different places we work in. So, for instance, in the village of Makariv in Kiev region, we completed uh, quite a lot of work last year. So, we are prioritizing and the efforts uh, locally working with the local authorities, but also we work with authorities uh, coordinating my, my action in Ukraine at large. And as usual, I will add briefly, uh, this approach uh, that we have uh, heard about from Tatiana uh, from uh, NPA, Допомагає вирішувати ті чи інші завдання. Тобто ми також проводимо НТО, ми також проводимо ІУРІ, і це теж наша комунікація, тому що, наприклад, проведення НТО неможливо без комунікації з громадою, так? А там же ми комплексно зазначаємо, які ж ми питання можемо вирішити в тій чи іншій громаді. Тому це, звичайно, нам допомагає в тому числі. Да, Юрій Чопик, Данська Рада у справах біженців. Дякую вам за презентацію. Е, в мене таке запитання. Я зрозумів, що у вас планується вже великий проект на 1200 людей, правильно? І ви попередньо плануєте включити 300 людей, ну, приблизно, яким ми вже допомагали, в цю наступну допомогу. І якщо буде кількість потенційних бенефіціарів більша, ніж 1200, кому буде надаватись пріоритет? Тобто повторно допомогти тим самим людям, яким ми вже допомагали, чи, можливо, краще допомагати тим людям, які ще зовсім не отримували вашої допомоги? Дякую. Дивіться, ми сповідуємо наразі в проєкті такий підхід, що людина фактично по календарному відходу, хто раніше зумів податися, отримав, отримав допомогу раніше. Ми не можемо дискримінувати людей, що хтось отримав мінно вибухову травму і поламав руку, а хтось цю руку втратив. Тобто це ну, дуже неправильний підхід. 
З приводу вашого питання на продовження проєкту, ми сповідуємо паралельний підхід. Тобто, якщо у нас є цих 300 людей, які отримали допомогу раніше, ми будемо поступово надавати допомогу тим 300 і паралельно брати нових 300. Тобто це не буде, що в перших два місяці отримують допомогу тільки 300 людей, які отримали її раніше. Це неправильно, ми не, нам необхідно мало того ідентифікувати нових людей і допомагати новим людям. Тобто тут важливо зберегти якби, рівність в цьому повну. Супер. Дякую, Петро. Дякую за виступ, за презентацію. Якщо є якесь дуже важливе питання, можливо, онлайн, якщо ні, тоді дякуємо. Я запрошую Олександр Япцев з презентацією щодо надання допомоги. Під'єднайтесь. Доброго дня, я Олександр Рябцев, головний спеціаліст секретаря національного органу з питань протимінної діяльності. Раніше, можливо, були знайомі зі мною як керівник сектору гуманітарного розмінування е, Міністерства з питань реінтеграції тимчасово окупованих територій, які зараз, функції якого зараз передано в секретаря Національного органу з питань протимінної діяльності при Міністерстві оборони України. Е, відповідно до передачі функцій, е, е, всі е, та на виконання оперативного плану заходів з протимінної діяльності затверджено Кабінетом міністрів. Uh, всі uh, записи, збір даних uh, та поширення інформації щодо інцидентів, пов'язаних з детонацією мін та вибухонебезпечних залишків війни, а також постраждалих від них осіб, здійснюються вже в секретаріаті Національного органу з питань протимінної діяльності. А польовий збір даних, uh, верифікацію, там, першочергову верифікацію інцидентів та постраждалих здійснюється як і раніше, місцевими органами виконавчої влади. Ну, то в основному це обласні військові адміністрації та відповідні їхні підрозділи, департаменти цивільного. Uh, mobilization preparations. So uh, this uh, depends on how the uh, incident uh, registration is arranged uh, locally, but also the departments of uh, health can be involved uh, uh, in the process. So you have seen our dashboard before. If you are not here for the first time, you I have also learned uh, in the previous time how you can get uh, access to it. So it was also included um, in, in the last time's uh, materials. So the administrator of this dashboard is uh, uh, the uh, National Mine Action Authority. The uh, intention is to learn about the locations with uh, the highest uh, pollution of uh, the uh, explosives, uh, which is a necessary a precondition for humanitarian demining. And also it's necessary for implementation uh, of uh, mine victims assistance uh, programs. And also it's necessary for the URI programs intending to change people's uh, behaviors. So um, we previously had uh, uh, discussions uh, on this and just we could see in the previous presentation, mine victims assistance is closely interconnected with other areas of mine actions, such as URI, uh, such as humanitarian demining, and uh, the uh, uh, promotion of uh, non-proliferation uh, uh, of uh, personal mines. So hopefully our database and uh, dashboard are helpful in displaying information that's necessary for uh, mine action operators uh, that had been um, certified um, for this. 
so we are providing access to this uh, information panel and uh, the operators are able to implement their humanitarian uh, activities uh, supporting uh, the uh, victims of uh, explosives even without being uh, certified as a uh, mine action operator so according to the ukrainian legislation uh, organizations providing aid to victims uh, do not have to be uh, certified in any special way so um, they can implement uh, their victims assistance uh, activities uh, if they meet the basic set of uh, criteria uh, necessary for these uh, activities. This implies national or international experience of uh, providing such aid, availability of funds, availability of uh, legal registration, and um, availability of clearly defined uh, Mm, a program and ability to track the, the implementation of this for uh, supporting the uh, uh, victims. So if uh, the uh, Secretariat of uh, the National Mine Action Authority receives all of uh, the documents uh, confirming this, such an organization can get access to the information panel and information on the victims. We are establishing such a practice with the Japanese uh, organization, Association for Aid and Relief Japan, which has uh, contacted uh, us on this issue. And we are right now working to uh, receive all the necessary documents from them confirming their eligibility to uh, provide uh... so after we receive um, all the necessary information from Association for Relief Japan. Mm, we will let them mm, access the database to ensure a targeted support to uh, the victims. And yeah, we are ready to do uh, this for organizations working in victim assistance area. And as Timur has mentioned already, we have some positive uh, experience both with uh, DRC and uh, also with the uh, Association of the Miners of Ukraine. So the, I'm in the positive experience about sharing the data of victims. Uh, in the information uh, management uh, system in SMO4, we were able to uh, make sure that we exchange such data with uh, DRC and uh, 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 the Miners Association of Ukraine. And thanks to that, 22 people were able to receive uh, their aid. So in total, according to our data, 423,581 krivna were paid to the victims. It is very important because uh, the victims, unfortunately, have to uh, get the support and while well, the government is working to improve its social support mechanisms the uh, situation is that uh, well people are waiting for quite a long time for their disability status to be confirmed uh, for them to be able to get more support from the government and in the meantime the support of non-governmental organizations is crucial to cover basic needs 
uh, of uh, people. So uh, well, this implies some basic needs such as seeing the doctor, being treated, etc. So whatever data is uh, provided uh, by uh, the secretariat based on our uh, database on incidents and victims, all of this is implemented once we receive uh, the consent from uh, the victim, consent for um, dissemination of uh, their personal data, sharing uh, it with other organizations to uh, ensure the provision of uh, the aid. So a few more uh, things to mention here about the challenges uh, that we uh, had um, uh, in the course of uh, providing aid to uh, people. So there is a lack of uh, prioritization uh, of uh, the uh, uh, deoccupied territories uh, polluted uh, by the mines. So the donors are focusing uh, mainly on the newly uh, liberated territories such as uh, Kharkiv, Mikolaev, Kherson, etc. But actually, we need not forget about the uh, Mm, uh, last eight years um, uh, impacted territories uh, and uh, of course the victims are still there uh, the people still are suffering from uh, insufficient uh, level of uh, uh, their needs being met uh, uh, also in terms of uh, surgery and other types of uh, medical treatment. So uh, this people are, uh, these people still need organizations to address uh, their needs. One more um, uh, crucial area that we noticed is that for quite a long time, uh, the uh, victims uh, need to sit there and wait until uh, the money is uh, going to be transferred to uh, their account. So uh, there is uh, still uh, a need for a better informing about uh, the uh, consideration of uh, each uh, person's uh, case. So we would very much like to receive information from you about each of the cases you are working on. So if you are only getting the general status uh, message that uh, well, the, the case is still under consideration and uh, it's the same status for a month, that's uh, not enough for us. We need to be able to uh, provide uh, more information to people and yeah thank you so much and i'm ready to answer uh, any questions you might have so do we have any questions here in this room no and online maybe online so yeah here's a hand Alexander, thank you for your presentation. Mm. And yeah, I can confirm that uh, on your part, uh, of course, it's uh, uh, this engagement is very important in terms, in terms of defining uh, priority regions and priority areas uh, the donors are not uh, really uh, flexible in their uh, choice and uh, well we cannot uh, add uh, other regions so they are mainly focusing uh, on uh, the newly liberated areas but in terms of victims uh, surely Kyiv region is one of the uh, top five and uh, so my question here is something that that we can potentially discuss uh, today on the uh, subsequent panels. But uh, in any case, I understand that uh, this uh, needs to be led by the uh, government, uh, the National Demining Authority. So you are establishing a database on the locations, but will there be 
data on uh, the victims so that if we introduce any changes to the legislation of Ukraine, if we have uh, a separate category of people, not just with uh, the mine injuries, but uh, people uh, impacted by all types of explosive objects, make sure that we always have this available, not always uh, can uh, non-government organizations uh, cover this as we are dependent on the donors strongly so yeah i can ask your uh, 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 i can answer your question we are indeed working on these uh, issues and uh, here is the map we are working on and we are showing here uh, the fullness of uh, information we have uh, on the um, incidents and so uh, you can find here information on the incidents this is uh, the internal resource but uh, still a part of our dashboard you can see the dashboard as the visualization of uh, the map showing the uh, numbers of incidents and victims unfortunately we cannot uh, provide uh, access to this uh, database because of uh, the uh, sensitive data in the database so there is data on the type of injury there are some family connections uh, mentioned so if the person for instance is in the hospital and uh, if the person is unconscious we uh, still uh, need to have uh, some person to contact for for them to be able to address the person's needs so according to our uh, legislation uh, there is a number of uh, consents that the person needs to give for such data to be available to uh, anyone so uh, basically if we have uh, the consent form that uh, you are signing uh, with a person well this is uh, uh, enough for us to uh, provide some working data but our legislation does not enable us to simply open access to uh, the database where we have uh, people's full uh, personal data, uh, contact details, uh, family members, etc. So this is the information for our internal use. This is the data collected from uh, the police, uh, from the uh, healthcare providers, etc. They are providing this data to us as a government authority, but to uh, share uh, this information with any third party we need to have a uh, person's express consent and uh, so if uh, you have some information on the incident that is still not there on our dashboard please inform us because our dashboard is uh, uh, visualizing the information that we get from the mining solutions or the association of the miners of ukraine etc etc so here uh, you can just see uh, the uh, uh, reflection of this data and you can easily verify whether your information is there already so uh, this is how we work with uh, UN's office on human rights and sometimes uh, yeah we have some differences in our data yes Dina yeah my question is about the same thing about the cooperation with government authorities but the focus is slightly different so what is the level of engagement of the ministry of social policy uh, the ministry of health how do you coordinate this activity with them because i know that the ministry of social policy is uh, responsible for developing uh, the policy for assisting the victims well, 
Uh, the Ministry of Social uh, no Policies, uh, far as I am aware, is currently not uh, disaggregating uh, the uh, data on uh, those impacted by the mines and uh, unexploded uh, remnants of war and uh, the uh, uh, victims of other types of injuries. So according to the Ukrainian legislation, there is no such requirement. Well, our map uh, is collecting data on the incidents and uh, the impacted people in terms of mine action. So we are uh, on the one hand creating the tool for uh, aiding uh, the victims, but also with the same tool, we are collecting the data about uh, the uh, polluted areas because in this way, the, uh, the mining operators will have a better understanding of the uh, polluted areas and the better understanding of uh, where your activities need to take place. And uh, uh, well, just to address uh, the people's behavior that may entail the growth of the numbers of such incidents. And uh, if the person ignores uh, the uh, uh, mind danger signs and uh, then they get uh, injured, this is indeed something that needs to be uh, addressed. And it's a comprehensive task and uh, uh, one of the areas here is to collect information on the victim and uh, the needs of this victim. Thank you so much. So do we have any questions online? If no, a round of applause, please. And thank you for this presentation. Currently, oh, we are, we have completed uh, this first session, and right now we are proceeding with uh, group work. So we will have a five minutes break for uh, the participants who got registered. Participants who got uh, registered for uh, section number one service directory, uh, they will have a chance to move to this uh, uh, neighboring uh, room. But those who are going to discuss uh, the uh, uh, media campaign, they are going to work here. For those of you who are with us online, we will have two separate uh, link. So if you want to discuss uh, the uh, media campaign, you are clicking one link. If you want to uh, take part uh, in uh, this other discussion on the directory, you will have another link to click. So are there any questions on uh, how to get to your session, the session of your choice. If you all have the good uh, understanding where you need to be, I will remind you once again. So the uh, mass media campaign is going to be discussed here. And uh, the uh, other discussion is going to happen in uh, the uh, room in uh, the opposite side of the corridor. Thank you.